What's up there, YouTube friends? It's Tommy T with Bear and Sunshine. And uh, I was looking for a ride. I was going to try and go find the next brewery. But then I realized I'm right here in front of Rubus Brewing in Tampa. So why don't you come with us? We're going to go meet Dave Arndt, the regional manager here at Brewbus. Guy's awesome. Wealth and knowledge. Put your learning hats on, folks. You're going to learn some stuff about beer, about this awesome brewery and what you can expect when you come here. This is an iconic symbol right here for Brew Bus. I think you get it. Anyway, come on with us. And we're gonna have a great time. Let's drink some beer. What's up, YouTube friends? It's Tommy Thompson here again for Beer and Sunshine. Got some new t-shirts. We've got a new beautiful co-host. And this is Dave Arndt. Am I saying your name right, Dave? Yep. Yeah, so we're at Brew Bus today. This is episode number three. As you can tell, I am, or we are, very excited. So uh, let's get to know Brewbus and find out all about their beer. Let's find out about how this, this whole thing came to be. Uh, is one of the many, uh, I think, 42, 43 breweries here in the Tampa Bay area. Again, we're only on number three. So hopefully you'll stick with us and we, we've got lots more to come. So take it away, Dave. It's your well, show. <laughs> I appreciate the, uh, the opportunity. Thank you so much for letting us uh, be a host uh, this weekend. Um, we're kind of at the beginning of our, our, our very, very busy, busy day uh, on a Saturday. Uh, we, uh, we started our company uh, about five years ago, uh, just as a, an idea. Uh, Anthony Derby, our president, uh, was in college and uh, out in Colorado and made the uh, attempt to try and hit more than three breweries out in Colorado in a day. And uh, made the unfortunate mistake of uh, being the one who had to drive. And uh, at the time, you know, wineries are doing all these wine tours and everything like that. And the concept came up, well, why not do this for breweries? So uh, his mom, uh, Tony Derby, uh, was basically the uh, president of operations for Cigar City. Uh, obviously the granddaddy of all craft beer here in Tampa. Yes, so. they're on our list. We're coming for you, <laughs> Cigar City. So with that, uh, on, a, on a break, he basically came back, pitched the idea, and uh, with the resources, the menial resources that they had at the time, they started the, uh, the concept of the brew bus. And so with that, there was only about five breweries that were any, anything you know, to be spoken about. You had Dunedin Brewing Company, uh, some fledgling stuff going on down in St. Pete, uh, Brewers Tasting Room, uh, Cigar City, obviously, and then uh, Southern, you know, were some of the home shops, uh, homebrew shops that were available <clears> at the time. So the focus became, well, you know, when's when's the when's the boom going to come? When are we going to do this uh, for real? And uh, lo and behold, a couple years, you know, not even a, a year and a half later, we started to see the growth of craft beer here in Tampa. So between between 2011, 2012, and 2013, we had this huge surge and increase in the craft beer market here uh, in the area. So. Uh, that being said, it became uh, just a just a, a, an essential part to what uh, you know needed to happen here. Uh, you got a population of people that need to cross the bay, bay you know, bay, bayside bridges. So, 45 minutes at a top, it's you know, it's kind of hard to do that by yourself. Uh, so the concept of Brewbus began to grow. Uh, we started off with one bus, which is our our largest vehicle. It's our 33 passenger. <laughs> Uh, and then we moved uh, and added our 22 passenger, which is one of our major workhorses for our fleet of buses. And uh, about that same time, the concept of, well, what are we going to do on the bus for 45 minutes when we're crossing the bridge? You know? Drink! So <laughs> that's, say, drink. that's where Brew Bus Brewing came into play. So Tampa Bay Brew Bus uh, started Brew Bus Brewing. And uh, being that we are uh, from the lineage of the Cigar City brands, uh, you know, we had uh, Cigar City help us. Uh, source the recipes and come up with our first brand, which was Rolling Dirty. Uh, and so Rolling Dirty, an Irish style red uh, red ale, uh, went with a really nice, uh, you know, English style malts and, and profile. Uh, really, you know, the low bitterness to it became the drinkability of that beer, and uh, it uh, it started winning awards. So uh, from the very get go, it was a it was an award winning brand, uh, and so the beer and the bus started to work together. Uh, and after, soon after that, we uh, started Are We There Yet, uh, which became the second beer. And uh, the, the benefit to that one is uh, that uh, it, it's just like any craft beer, you make a mistake and all of a sudden now you've got a new product. So <laughs> it started its life as just a standard weed ale and uh, somebody accidentally dry hopped it. Uh, and so it uh, got dry hopped with pretty much whatever goes into Invasion or uh, uh, Highline. And so from that, we basically got a hoppy weed ale. And uh, we've refined uh, refined the recipe, and uh, that that beer has gone on to uh, 
to do great things for us as well. And uh, you know that basically added to the same time the, the fleet of beers, the fleet of buses started to grow. So by 2013, uh, when I came on board uh, as a part-time driver, uh, we had five brands of, of beer, and we had three buses available to do. That's beer. how you started, as a, as a part-time I, driver? I started out as a part-time driver. And what, what's your role today? What do you do? So I'm the regional manager. So what that means is uh, nothing more special than I basically manage all of the fleet <clears> in Tampa, <throat> uh, and I basically work on the public schedule for what it is that we do. Uh, that being said, by the time that I came on board, all the beers had started to do their job basically on the market. Uh, with uh, the in, uh, adding of You're My Boy Blue, uh, which is our most award-winning <laughs> beer, Last Stop IPA, uh, and then Double Decker English Style Porter. So with those five brands, we went to market and uh, have been uh, basically singing the praises of those, those five beers ever since. Uh, with the bus, uh, it became the opportunity to see what can actually happen. So uh, when I came on board, I literally did our first Friday event. First Friday for us is every month we pick up uh, here in Tampa, we take between 30 and 70 people down to the block party down in St. Pete, and uh, we just let them have at it down in St. Pete for the entire evening. You, so. you know, I, I have a very good friend, Sherry Coper. Hey, what's up, Sherry? How's hey, it going? Sherry. She lives down. She lives down the street. Years ago, I've always been an, an entrepreneur. I've done all sorts of different different things, mostly just selling junk online. And uh, my my friend, she'd always thought she wanted to do something entrepreneurial, and she came up with this idea. She thought, you know. She goes, that trip across the bridge, is if we just got a bus, I'm not, this is not a lie, I swear to God, I swear to God, I swear. she said, if we just got a bus, she goes, we could, we could have people, they would, they would buy tickets, and we would shuttle them across, and mm-hmm. you know, maybe we could give them drinks, <laughs> and then we'd get them across, and then, and then later on, they'd go out, they'd party, and then we'd drive them back. And it could work, and for years, we, I said, Sherry, I was like, let's do it, you should look into this, we should do this, it's a good idea. And then here it is. And it, yeah, and that's been our one of our flagship events from the very be- from the very get go. So every month, uh, the first Friday of every month, we uh, we pile pile everybody on the bus. Uh, back when I started, or back when I first went on it, it was unlimited beers, and uh, you can just imagine what that. Yeah. And we had glass bottles yeah. on the bus, and it was a little bit different than what it is today. Um, but uh, you got to go through rookie mistakes like that. So, mm-hmm. uh, but anyway. I saw Anthony and met him. I met the driver, and I was like, you know what? I'm like, I gotta try this. I gotta, I gotta at least get out there and you know see what's going on. So I submitted my resume. I went through the whole uh, interview process, and literally that that September, uh, we I got picked up as a part time driver. And uh, through the rest of the that that end, end of uh, 2013, it was just kind of a so I'll do it every once in a while. And then of course, I'm working for a job that by the time I come into January, they're like, hey, by the way, all of your jobs. Yeah, we're we're gonna push all those to Plano, Texas. So, uh, so at that time, it was kind of like, hey, Anthony, um, I can work a lot more now because I don't really know what's gonna happen with my job. So, you know, and that conversation led to uh, just a heavier involvement, uh, a heavier uh, uh, you know, process of you know putting down procedures on paper, and um, and basically working collaboratively with uh, with Anthony and uh, and Aaron, who's the vice president of the company. He's based in our South Florida location. Uh, we, uh, we basically created the team that is today. Um, and, uh, since then the expansion has, has grown. Uh, we've got, uh, about 10 full-time employees with about, uh, 40 part-time employees, uh, throughout Tampa, uh, and South Florida. And, um, we have, uh, right now, I think on average, <coughs> I think last year alone, we, we transported about, uh, 12,000 people or 12,000 so. alcoholics. Yeah. Let's get it right. <laughs> Yes, yes. Beer holic. So, uh, so that being said, uh, it's a it's a really it's a really great thing to see you know an organic growth the way that we've done it. Uh, we've we've done very menial in the way of marketing. Uh, I mean, it's really been grassroots, word of mouth. Uh, that's pretty much how this has all started. And uh, Facebook page, uh, we have a Facebook page for uh, not only the brewing site, but for Tampa and South Florida. Um, our website was revamped uh, at the beginning of la- or the middle of last year, and that's given us a great opportunity. Uh, to provide for our, our private events, uh, which end up being about 60% of our uh, our bus uh, bus tour services. So uh, that being said, I mean it, it gives us a great opportunity to put not only a great public uh, offering every weekend uh, with our sample tour on Friday night, our full port tour, which is a behind the scenes all inclusive tour to three different breweries on Saturday, and then uh, what grew out of just becoming a part of the Seminole Heights area is our local loop now, which has been a hit. 
uh, for this entire community. How, how many breweries are involved in the local loop? So local loop started with six. Uh, we uh, we initially started with Tampa Bay Brewing Company, Coppertail, Southern Brewing and Winemaking, uh, Ella's American Folk Art Cafe, uh, Angry Chair Brewing, and uh, the Independent uh, Cafe and Bar. And uh, that was the original six. And uh, when uh, the opportunity came to <clears throat> move to Seminole Heights, uh, after uh, you know uh, the acquisition of Florida Avenue Brands, and then we get into that in a second. Uh, it gave us an opportunity to expand, and our friends down at Hidden Springs were chomping at the bit to be a part of this as well. So uh, we knew that uh, basically we needed to you know, to completely revamp this and redo it the the right way. Uh, so we have our terminal, uh, which is our our home op home of operations for our tap room and our brewing, uh, as well as the buses. So that's where our launching point is on Sunday morning at eleven. Uh, we have two buses that go around every 30 to 45 minutes to uh, the start of the terminal. We go to Southern, we go to Ella's, Angry Chair, Independent, Hidden Springs, Tampa Bay Brewing Company, which has within walking distance of Cane, uh, Florida Cane Distillery, Cigar City Cider Mead, and soon to be Rock Brothers uh, Brewing uh, right there on the, around the corner. So there's a lot to hit in Ebor, and then we finish up at Coppertail. Uh, and Kent and all those guys are absolutely fantastic, uh, you know, playing the anchor. Uh, as we make our way back to the terminal, so it's a it's a it's a great afternoon for ten bucks riding around uh, in the Tampa area. Uh, Uber ten in, bucks. Ten bucks only. So it's the only dry event that we have. It's a drive. All right, <laughs> let's get on the bus. <laughs> so that being said, it's a it's a fantastic opportunity to really just get out on a Sunday afternoon without having to do do much of more than just drive you know drive yourself. So. Uh, drive yourself to one of those points of pickup, and just like any transit bus, it's just focused on going to those stops. So that's amazing. Yeah. So, but this all came out of uh, you know all, out of our collective you know hearts and minds and stuff like that. What we wanted to do. I mean, being a small company, we have the opportunity to be that uh, movable uh, within. Uh, and you know, being that um, if you look at other crap beer tour service companies around the country, uh, we we've kind of kept that that close to home feeling of, you know, we want all of our partners, our brewery partners to be an emphatic part of what we do. And uh, that's given us an opportunity to keep our costs low. 10 bucks doesn't, you know, is not anything out of the pot, you know, out of pocket for oh, the consumer. Uh, and it gets you in front of the faces of, uh, of eight different uh, great local lo uh, locations with the, with the long-term jo uh, job of ours to start expanding that. So uh, that being said, with what's happening on the bus sign, uh, we, we've gotten to a point now where we're, we're, we feel comfortable uh, with where we're at, but we need to grow. And so the long term is adding buses, you know, having multiple routes on a Saturday or a Sunday, uh, expanding into Pinellas County, getting further deeper into Sarasota, getting out to Lakeland on a regular basis. I know the guys up in Brooksville, uh, Marker 48, and those guys have been chomping at the bit for us to come wow. up there. So it's a, it's a great opportunity for us where we're standing right now, but our long-term goal and envisionment is really to be, you know, statewide fully uh, and functioning, not only just in the Tampa market, but Orlando, uh, Jacksonville. Oh, I can definitely <laughs> see picking it up. I mean, how many times have you been, you know, my gosh. Exactly. I want to go out drinking, but I don't want to drive. Exactly. And for, and for <laughs> us. 30 friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and the biggest benefit more than anything is that we're the, we're, we provide our product on the bus. So. You have every opportunity to try not only every beer that you're going to be visiting. You get you get for ten dollars you get the beer too. That's that's uh, that's the that's the that's the only event that we don't have beer on the bus for. Okay. So the ten dollars just gets you to the breweries, Correct. et cetera, whatever. Yeah. But uh, and then you can just bring beer with you. You can uh, you can bring your growlers. It is a dry mm -hmm. event. That's the only event that we have that's not that doesn't include any beverages on it. But our sample tour on Friday night, you get a complimentary beverage when you get on the bus. We do a couple samples at three different breweries, so we're buying those drinks for you, uh, so you can sample and taste. Our full pour tour on Saturday, the one that's going out today, is uh, basically you get two complimentary beverages uh, on the bus, and then uh, we'll pick up a pint and do a behind-the-scenes tour at the three different breweries. So for 50 bucks on a Saturday afternoon to visit uh, three different spots, and you know we, we've we've really done our job to make sure that you get quality products, not only in the services that we provide, but Working with great beer part, brewery partners in order to ensure that you have a great time, uh, you know, with your friends or family, uh, like however, you know, whatever type of group that wants to get in. Um, and the benefit is that all of those, pro uh, uh, especially the that brewery tour package, has translated really well uh, for our private rentals. And so that in itself, you know, makes it a lot easier for people who've experienced the bus on a Saturday to say, hey, you know what? It was a great time, but you know what? I want to get my 20 friends mm -hmm. or something like that to go out for a group outing. And so we've had the benefits of having accounts uh, 
that we sell our beer to. Uh, Ella's was just on the bus a couple weeks ago. Uh, that you know they're part of our local loop, so they they utilize our services. We've had so your group outings can be anybody anytime. Anybody anytime. We're okay. available seven days a week for that for that opportunity within the realm of what our brewery. Partner... Twenty one and over though, folks. Twenty one and over. <laughs> Twenty one and over, definitely. <laughs> or a fake ID. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> kidding. Know. No fake ID. We, we do Allegedly, vendors, people so. use fake ID. Yeah, we uh, no. I mean, we, but we we've, we've grown this organically to the point where you know we want people to you know to bring their friends and you know mm-hmm. be involved and create those opportunities opportunities for hey you know you see our beer on the shelf and it's like oh man you know now I got to go back and get on the bus again and that's the benefit of having that reciprocal relationship with the beer that we've created and then the bus opportunity you know the opportunity for creating great op- you know memories on the bus which well, is you could fantastic. do you could do bachelor parties yes. you could do bridal parties we have uh today is actually all, a couple all that, yeah. today is uh two birthday we have uh we have six events going out today one public event we've got uh two group outings uh, two bachelor parties and two birthday parties. Wow. So you can just imagine what's what's going to be. How happening. many fights have there been on the buses? <laughs> I don't want to go into those details, <laughs> but I'll just say that we've uh, we've definitely done the due diligence to make sure that we protect not only ourselves uh, as a company, but we protect our our clients and uh, and and passengers. And so do you have staff with you on the bus correct. as well? Correct. So okay. our driver and our attendant basically manage the event. Uh, all we were, we've basically got done responsible vendor certification, just like any bar. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of our staff are highly trained in the beer that we're serving on the bus, so they, they're very knowledgeable to the product that they're offering uh, to you to consume uh, and can answer any questions. And then uh, we do a really a really good uh, heavy load of education on the brewers themselves because you know, we want our staff to basically provide the knowledge that maybe people from out of town don't have for what's great you know, that we have in this area. So, uh, so we've built a program around uh, taking our staff you know, to and teaching them about all of these breweries, uh, and so that they can give good recommendations. You know, you're going to rap for the first time. Well, what do you drink at rap? You know, he rap Greg Rap is an amazing brewer, and he's got a huge lineup of German German style beers. But right there in the middle, he's got chocolate peanut butter porter. And where's rap? Where's rap? Rap is over in uh, over off 118th, over in uh, the Largo area. Okay. Uh, yeah. So sure. fantastic, fantastic brewery. But he's got the number one goes in the world. And if you've ever had a goes. It's a very eclectic style of beer, uh, and it literally was resurrected and has now become one of the key reasons why we go to, to his brewery. Really? Um, so that being said, you know, it's our staff then that we're, are, are you know knowledgeable enough to basically push those recommendations and you know make those uh, opportunities. You just available. did, Dave. You just yes. did push that recommendation. <laughs> we're gonna go there and drink some of that beer. Uh, did, did, let me ask you: Did hmm? you, because Diana asked this, did you have anything to do? With uh, Meg and Brew Through SRQ in Sarasota, did no. you guys really? Mm-mm. Do you know of her and them? Uh, no, I mean they're we, like they're like a, like a small version of what you guys do. They do the uh, trolley tour, we, trolley bus. Yeah, tour. I mean we've uh, we we know our. I mean we don't look at it as competition. Right, because, I know that the, the brewery the brewers here locally are like a family, and everybody helps everybody. That's why I thought maybe she came up here and was like, mm-hmm. hey, can you teach me, you know, what did no, you guys No, uh, I mean, we've, we've had, uh, uh, like, Southwest uh, Southwest Florida tours uh, down in Fort Myers. Uh, we, we've got, we, we've met up with them a couple times at different events. Uh, we do a big event to uh, Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day down in uh, Funky <laughs> Maple Google. Bacon. Uh, Say that three times real fast. <laughs> so Maple Bacon Coffee Porter today, we took uh, we took fifty five people, uh, fifty people down to that event, uh, and we met up, and you know, lo and behold, here's all these different you know Miami brew buses down there. We're there uh, with all of our passengers in Southwest Florida. So we everybody's got the same frame of mind. Uh, we we've taken the approach of uh, you know we keeping it you know really clean and you know good looking and everything like that, and. Again, what sets us apart is the fact that we're a brewery too. We, we're right in the trenches, just as and being collaborative, just as any other uh, brewer in the area. It just so happens that now we're starting to see that the the movement from just being a bus company to being a brewery, and we're seeing that balance finally move over to really trying to create that creative opportunity with with the beer that we're producing. What, what about open container laws? Isn't that isn't that a thing anymore? It's a uh, on the bus. We actually have uh, we 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 have a license that basically uh, it, just the same as you would have if you got on a plane to to have a really? uh, consume alcohol. So. And you said you guys are connected to Cigar City, and Cigar City's Joe Redner, right? right. Yep. And uh, that guy can do anything. <laughs> he can just do a- he can do anything. So that uh, that parentage, unfortunately, it has uh, we've moved definitely well well beyond the uh, the umbrella, um, and we're definitely an our, our on our own company uh 
And so that uh, that being said, you know, we, we pay homage to where we came from, but at the same time, we are our own brand. Yeah. Uh, we are definitely. But what a great affiliation! That's, that's, uh, yeah, that's and that's uh, and it, uh, it it helped us get to where we're at now. And the benefit is that we're uh, we're we're doing our own thing on, and it's uh, it's the it's probably one of the the key the best things about where we're at uh, within the industry is just that uh, we've taken the time to uh, develop our own style and approached uh, our brewing process, and then the beers that we produce um, that are completely counter to how everybody else is doing in the market and uh and that's a great great opportunity well tommy this awesome. is like so interesting but we have to take a break well we have to take a beer break <laughs> all right fine well, hopefully we'll come back with beer yeah go grab yourself a beer and beer and sunshine will be right back welcome back to beer and sunshine i hope you got yourself a fine beverage and we are going to be testing some fine beverages as well <laughs> Finally. Yeah, <laughs> it's time. Excited from the proud. <laughs> <laughs> Woo-hoo! This is what you've all been waiting for, yeah. and so have we. Well, mostly me, but yeah. <laughs> what so got uh, here? so the, the, the fun part about where we're at uh, as a business is uh, happened this, this past January. So uh, we I, I told the, the story about uh, Cigar City, mm-hmm. uh, and, uh, well, we, we needed a home. And uh, it just so happened that uh, just through the random channels of how the industry works that uh, our, our friends, unfortunately, at Florida Avenue had uh, the, the need to want to, to move on. Uh, Bruce, who was the guy, one, one, of the few, one of the guys that started Florida Avenue, uh, just felt the, you know, he was like, I need to retire. And so the opportunity came uh, to, to purchase the brand as a whole. So... What did we do? We kind of consolidated and took the opportunity to seriously, and uh, made made that happen. And so Brew Bus Brewing uh, bought Florida Avenue Brewing, and so that kept number one the opportunity to or gave us the opportunity to move to Seminole Heights. Uh, we're off of North Florida now. And who who was Florida Avenue Brewing? Is that, so that an old brewer that was they, here in um, Tampa? They they started off uh, as uh, cold storage brands uh, and then uh, changed their name to Florida Avenue. And uh, they 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 went with uh, you know just a good classic ale, uh, an IPA, and then a brown ale, and then had a, a really good uh, portfolio of just uh, just awesome small small batch product. Um, they hit the market well. And uh, you can actually find them on draft pretty much all up and down the coast, uh, down even down in the Keys. It's absolutely uh, been one of one of uh, one of the better things. And, uh, and of course, with Florida in the name, you know, it's a very mm-hmm. good brand reach. The tourist population that comes in, so uh, it, it was kind of a, a great opportunity for us to basically to come in. Um, and, and obviously, we need when we needed a home, we. Well, we're we're not gonna just be the run of the mill type of place. We want an event space. You know, we, we know we're gonna have twenty to thirty people coming in for our bus events. We want to have a place where they can come and hang out, and just in the essence of like what a bus terminal is, our terminal, Brew Bus Brewing and uh, Terminal and Brewery is what it is. We we've created this as a lounge aspect, uh, with an opportunity to be a tap room. So, uh, so our twenty taps um, on draft. Uh, we have our five core brands from Brew Bus and our, uh, the two core brands that we're currently uh, producing for Florida Avenue. And then we do a number of guest drafts uh, from all of our friends around the state. Uh, and then we do a number of treatments. And a lot of uh, our, uh, since our brew house is now fully functioning, we're doing a lot of new test batches that, uh, that are available on, uh, on draft. So uh, this week we actually produced our first Kolsch. Uh, so we have a Kolsch on draft. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. Really nice, light, refreshing. Just a really good approachable towards the end of the summer. It's still hot outside. We're not going to be in the fall anytime soon mm-hmm. without you know having heat. So uh, we want to keep everything really light and refreshing. Um, we've got uh, something in the works for uh, uh, that might have pumpkin in it. Um, I won't say much, but uh, it's Everybody's definitely on the old pumpkin spice. It's, uh, it's definitely bubbling <laughs> in the back right now. So there's uh, there's going to be something uh, something soon. I don't know. Uh, I can't give too many details, but uh, basically just yeah. it's o- something. October to watch is for. around the corner. Yeah, yeah. So. Halloween surprise. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, we're we're basically doing full production now. So we've actually uh, so as of next week we will be officially producing uh, You're My Boy Blue. Uh, on on scene, uh, we've got all of our cans on our canning line uh, up, uh, about to get up and running. Is now is any of this beer in the stores? Can we? Can yeah. we you go all to the supermarket. Yeah, and, and all of our this product up? in the Tampa area, uh, you can buy at uh, Whole Foods, uh, Whole Foods, Total Wine, ABC. We're in some select Publixes around pretty much every craft uh, craft beer bar, uh, as well as a number of uh, you know upper end sports bars and such uh, throughout the downtown Tampa, St. Pete, uh, Pinellas County. Uh, we're down into Sarasota. Uh, we've got statewide coverage on both brands. 
uh, you know, we're in Orlando, Jacksonville, uh, so you can find us around uh, in most of the uh, most of your uh, your craft bar, uh, your uh, local bottle shop will definitely mm -hmm. carry us. Mm -hmm. But if somebody uh, wanted to, they can buy it here as well. They can buy it here as well. Uh, you know, we have a package to go. We actually have mix and max package, so which uh, which is great. So if you want two of you know each, okay. and you're going on the road. Boom. Now you how got many? It. How many beer? How many different beers do you keep on tap here? We keep twenty on draft all the time. So nice. we have that availability, uh, and as we start to grow, uh, and whatever <clears throat> we're, we're going to be working on uh, uh, bombers, just like everybody else. Uh, the 22 ounce profile is uh, is absolutely awesome. Uh, we've got a crowler machine, uh, so uh, we'll be doing uh, scene 32 ounce cans um, on scene right now. That's our crowler Wednesday event. Uh, we, what's great about our tap room is like when we started this, we wanted it to be available to everybody. So we're open seven days a week. So Sunday, obviously, with Local Loop is the the anchor to the beginning of the week. Monday, uh, we're open at four. Uh, we have uh, uh, our heights, our heights night, basically Seminole Heights. Uh, there's a couple different uh, zip codes. So we have uh, uh, basically you bring in your um, your pay stub or your address on your on your driver's license. You get to, you get a beer for free on us. Nice, uh, which is and I great. shouldn't have moved. I had a house. My, <laughs> the, the only house, the only house I've ever owned was down the street on Peninsular oh, Avenue, right off of Boulevard. Yeah. Right off of Boulevard. So we've got the, drinking for free. So that's Monday night for us. Uh, Tuesday is Taco Trivia Tuesday. Uh, so which nice. is always awesome. So our, do you guys our, do you guys have food here? Uh, not yet. We're actually in the process of building out a really? kitchen. Really. So, uh, and it's, uh, it, the, the benefit to it is that, uh, our, we do have a food truck that'll show up. We, we ask them to do taco themed, whatever. Uh, taco themed, whatever. That's what and I, that's so, what I say at home. So we may have a burger truck taco come out, but they'll whatever. be doing a Tex-Mex style. You know, right. we, we got a pizza guy come out. They're is gonna, that on Tuesdays only that you have food? Uh, it's only, uh, that's just Tuesday night. We do have food trucks out on Friday and Saturday okay. as well. Um, and, uh, like I said, we're, uh, Wednesday night is our crowler, our crowler night. What's, what's the term crowler? What is so it? crowler is a, it's a 32 ounce, uh, can. And uh, when we go out into the tap room and kind of do a look, see, uh, I'll show you the can in our seamer. Uh, basically 32, it's a 32 ounce can, uh, that basically you can fill up with any beer that you want off of our draft list. And you seal it. Minus, you do all that here. We do that all here. Wow. Uh, so it's minus minus guest drafts. It's only on the brew bus brands, and uh, basically you fill that up and go about your way. But then you've got 32 ounces of our beer, basically to take on the road with you. Nice. So, uh, it's great. Uh, we we went with approach just like most of the other brands in the uh, in the Florida State area, just based on uh, the need of wanting to be on the water, being on out of the beach. That mm -hmm. cans are the fastest and easiest way to transport product, and glass, unfortunately, just has breakability and such. Um, and it's it, it's more it, it's better for the beer. So we when we took that opportunity, we took it really in hand of like we want to put the best product out there. We want it to basically last, uh, you know, within that freshness rate. Uh, but we definitely want it to be as safe as possible and prevent you know oxidization. Better, and all this better stuff for the beer. So better for the beer. I've always most people will say they don't like beer out of a can. They'd rather mm -hmm. have it out of, out of a bottle. I have always preferred it out of a can. It's and now. I know. I, I was right. I was right. It's better out of a can. He said it. Yep. He knows. It's uh. It, it's to be to be honest. It's uh. It's it's a trend that's uh. That's been going through. Uh, Oscar Blue started it. Uh, and they've they've perfected it and they've given pretty much the opportunity for everybody. And uh, you know, we see a lot of our uh, our you know brewery partners going to cans because of convenience. Yeah. Uh, it's a lot less weight. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a lot easier to stack and it's a lot easier to transport. Uh, the way that we, uh, the way that the, uh, this is done. Um, so yeah, so a crowler uh, on Wednesday is uh, the best way to, uh, to take our product, uh, you know, home for the weekend uh, or for the latter part of the week. Uh, Thursday night is a kind of an open night for us, and then we do events either Thursday night and Friday night. Uh, we have uh, our first Friday event. Uh, we have some art shows that come in and out of the uh, the tap room on a regular basis. Uh, Saturday is usually left for. Now we're in college football season, so we've got. Uh, Premiership on Saturday morning uh, when we open up, and we'll have uh, college football in the evenings. You guys have TVs yeah, yeah. and stuff and everything. Uh, yeah, out we there got and... two. We got two nice TVs over the bar. Uh, we've got a projector uh, projection screen in our lounge area. Uh, right. That's uh, that's every uh, nice. that's available. We'll, we'll go check that out yeah. here yeah. shortly. So uh, that being said, you know, let's we can do a little tasting here on the, uh, on a couple brands just to kind of get your you know wet the whistle a little bit. Um, so I do have to ask when mm -hmm. you were talking about your the names. Mm -hmm. The names are unique. Now, do do you have one person that comes up with your name, or do you have the name first? It's and then... um, it's 
it's kind of at this point it's collaborative. Um, when we uh, Kevin and Brett are uh, our, our brewers uh, and Vinny, uh, Vinny just came on board with us. Uh, it, those guys sitting in the back, it's you know you kind of John and you kind of figure out what what's what's going to work best. So do you brew it first? Name it by taste, or is it the other it's, way it's around? It's kind of a it's kind of a mix. You know, sometimes like in in particular for You're My Boy Blue, You're My Boy Blue obviously comes from the movie Old School. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we made the decision that if we we're gonna do anything with that beer, if we we're gonna do you know add do some additives, some treatments to it, well we want to keep it within that realm. So we did a, a lemon peel uh, version of that, and if you remember at the end of the movie, unfortunately when Blue dies. They're playing <laughs> Dust in the Wind. Mm -hmm. So that treatment was called Zest in the Wind. Ah, awesome. Uh, we, did a, uh, a version of, uh, we did a version of it with Habanero uh, uh, over the summer. And um, there's, a, there's a point in the movie where there's a uh, KY jelly match. Uh, in yeah, the basement. yeah. And, uh, and Will Ferrell's character, turn, Frank, turns over to Blue. Are you okay? And he goes, bring, bring the fucking bell, you pansy. <laughs> so that became the name for uh, for the habanero version of uh, "You're My Boy Blue." So ring the fucking bell was, uh, was uh, awesome. F and bell if it's on if yeah. it's on your menu, you got to be G rated. Yeah. In That's some fantastic. Cases. Um, so that being said, it's it's always a play on words. It's always something to play with. Um, we uh, we did a treatment for uh, our our wheat there yet, which is our hoppy wheat, um, and it's our beach cruiser. And for when we opened up in April of this year in our tap room, that was one of the first beers that went on draft. And we now have said that 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 beer has to be produced every summer. That uh, because well, that goes along with the whole correct. robust thing. Yeah. Do you yeah. have people that actually say well, that we during the whole? Well, we are we there yet? Are we, we there get that. yet? And well, I know of course everybody with rolling dirty. I mean, you yeah. can't really go wrong with that one. Yeah. And you know, everybody always requests that you know riding dirty. Yeah. Uh, you know, so I mean that the, you know there, there's a lot of fun that goes within that. Um, you, you need you need to do one. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give this to you. This is for free. <laughs> for free. The Mile Five Club. The Mile Five Club. Ooh, nice one. Now that one, I don't even, I don't even know the reference for that. The Mile High Club. Ah. Oh wow. Wow. Somebody had, somebody is a little hungover. <laughs> he, he mentioned he had some whiskey. <laughs> hey, the bourbon last night was talking really good. Yeah. So the Mile Five Club. Mile like Five Club. I just have to use five different hops. So. Cheers. I just wrote that here. It's fresh <laughs> material. You can have it. That's Please. awesome. We're um, innovative at beer sunshine. <laughs> if anything else, now this this we're not we're not in England, right? No, no we we're confirm not. we're in Florida, right? Yep. So we don't drink warm beer here. We drink cold beer. Yep. I say we crack it, crack so some of these open. I'm, I'm going to say we're going to start with uh, "You're My Boy Blue" just because it's in front of us. Um, you, you know, um, two questions. Or I would, uh, Oscar Blues. You mentioned them. They're not local. They're in Florida. They're not Florida. No, uh, Florida. They are not in Florida. Uh, Oscar Blues obviously is a uh, brand that started in Colorado, and they've got uh, about yeah. three or four different plants. Mama's the Little Yellow Pills. Uh, they're Pilsner. I, is Pilsner amazing? Um, I love that. Gales, That's Gales my, one of my favorite Pilsners. Good. So uh, you guys do a Pilsner? Uh, not yet. Uh, we're uh, we're working on really fleshing out a lot of our lighter beers. Um, Thank you. We've got uh, ales, obviously. That's what we primarily focus on. Uh, like I said, we just produced a Kolsch. Oh, it's great. So, uh, so you're my boy, Blue. Uh, it's excellent. This uh, this beer started off. Uh, it, we we wanted to basically kind of open up the opportunity to bring a lot of. We're a bus company. We're a craft beer tour service company. But we've got a lot of people that don't drink craft beer. Right. Yeah. So the best opportunity to provide to the public, basically, that doesn't understand, you know, the differences between, you know, what a, you know, all the hop varietals, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, the differences between a red ale, an amber, a brown ale. We want to create basically brands that stand by themselves, but also are introductory and Light, approachable. Lighter, the fruit flavors, right. things like that stuff. So, that people so can you're my get boy, Blue. To. Is it's brewed as a biscuity wheat, uh, so it's got this really nice, crisp, basic. Uh, wheat flavor to it uh, and then basically at the very end we just use a boatload of uh, of organic uh, blueberry puree because you can really taste blueberry yeah. and uh, it basically all that goes then into the fermentation process uh, so you've got this really nice base mellow mm -hmm. beer across the, the, uh, it's the, the body it's almost a little little tart in the back side the, yeah. just a, a, little just bit a of dash tart. just a dash yeah. and nice. uh, uh, and the, the benefit to it is that it, it's very approachable it's an easy beer for a lot of people to get into because they you know the 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 fruit in a way masks the beer but for the beer connoisseur it's a fantastic beer because mm -hmm. of there's not that much complexity to it and you've got just enough essence to really you know, make it a, a great a great product so this actually uh, is our most award-winning beer uh, so me, what that what does that mean um, all of our beer has been to different uh, uh, brewery uh, events throughout the country uh, the most recent one was the US Open of beers where we took a number of awards 
And uh, the benefit to this one is it went to Great American Beer Fest out in Colorado last year. And uh, it ended up taking second place in the Fruit of Wheat category. So, uh, so this product be, uh, ended up being the one of two Florida brands out of the entirety of uh, GABF that, uh, that won awards, which was absolutely Great. fantastic. Are course. you ever so, going to give those awards back? You said you took them. So I figured, yeah. <laughs> I figured you just stole them to show up the beer and you'll take yeah. that thing. Yeah, we, you, uh, this, you know, this reminds you a little bit. Uh, but but it, this, I think this is Sea Dog Ale. The Sea Dog mm -hmm. Ale, that's the only blueberry ale I've ever liked. Mm -hmm. I don't really like fruity beers mm -hmm. all, all that much. Um, I'm more of a hops guy, more IPA guy, that sort of thing. But this is really mm -hmm. delicious. It, it's a little, like the, that Sea Dog Ale has a little bit more of like a, like a, like a crispy bite to it. Mm -hmm. This is smoother. Mm -hmm. And then has that little bit of tartness. Mm -hmm. This this is yeah. really really good. Really and uh, good. and and again the, uh, the the benefit to this beer is that uh, that tartness you know, really kind of goes away uh, mm -hmm. after uh, after you know like basically let it let it air out a little bit whatever pour it uh, you know the fresher fresher beer is going to have a little bit less tartness to it. Um, not to say that this is old beer, but it's definitely uh, it's definitely just got that opportunity to have that little little twinge that blueberries I like do it. provide. Yeah, I like it's delicious. Too. So we'll move on Does from that. Does off-camera want to try some? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so we'll go with, uh, with Are We There Yet? Uh, Are We There Yet is uh, our, our accident beer. As I said, it started off as a, a general wheat ale, and uh, it got uh, dry hopped. So what ended up happening with that is we refined the uh, the recipe and uh, basically continued the, the, the program of adding so hops to it. This, what, is, what? this was a happy a hoppy mistake? A hoppy mistake. So uh, <laughs> what's, the, what's the technique here? I noticed you're pouring it sideways is that just because the hole's oval and it gets a little bit yeah, better poured I, that well, way? I'm trying to not uh, not give you too much uh, too much uh, uh -huh. too much head on the uh, on the Cheers. glass that way you're uh, you're able to yeah really don't see. give me any head Dave yeah. please not, <laughs> not, or I, my wife wouldn't it's be not happy. that kind of show <laughs> I can't wink <laughs> there we go and you're a handsome guy don't yeah. get me wrong I like the beard <laughs> and the hairstyle it's fantastic so yeah balding Ooh. yeah Ooh. so this is what we it's tasty I, Yes. This is probably one of my favorites for the summertime. It is our summer seasonal, so we're Ooh. right at the right at the tail end yeah. of that right now. Mind if I do. Now, is no. there is there a hint? Do I smell a hint orange? No, it's no? actually that, that's actually comes from the hops itself. Um, wow. I mean, it's brewed as a wheat ale, uh, and uh, basically, are the hop varietals that we use basically accentuate some oh. of the base flavors. I think that's Tommy's favorite profile. so far. Cra crazy smooth. That's good. It's <laughs> delicious. So it, uh, it's got some citrus notes, but mm -hmm. we, you know, really you've got a little bit more melon peel. You've got some tropical fruit in the back there. So it's got that. It does. It, it's not, and it's a beach beer. I mean, and mm -hmm. when I say like one of our treatments was beach cruiser, we added mango and we added peach to it. And it, hmm. complete, it didn't change the dynamic of the beer in any way. It actually... Gave it another opportunity to, to to look at how complex this beer is on its own, and then look at what we could do with a lot more to you know a lot more than just you know uh, just just the just the basic brand itself. So, no, uh, at five and a half percent, both both these are five and a half percent. So they're definitely not uh, your run of the mill you know light beers um, any, by any means, but uh, they've got that base complexity, which is just what we want to offer to the public. So. Uh, it's a great it's a great opportunity for us, especially for the summer brands, um, you know, to introduce something that is only going to be available during the summertime. So with uh, you're my boy Blue and Rolling Dirty and Last Stop, unfortunately I don't have any cans of our Last Stop available. Um, but that those those three beers are our core beers that are available year round uh, on draft and in package. So you can find those definitely at you know your World of Beer, your Brass Tap, uh, any of your local craft beer bars, uh, and then obviously package uh, package is available. So. Um, and then uh, the last beer basically is our Rolling Dirty. Um, Rolling Dirty is uh, definitely uh, going to be a little bit different than uh, these two. Uh, it's an Irish style uh, red, uh, heavy malt going forward. Uh, really nice amber in color, but not uh, not overpoweringly bitter. Uh, it's actually lightly, I like to say, sparsely bittered. Um, but uh, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's got that English flair. Um, it's got that uh, approach, that drinkability. I think of this uh, sitting watching football on a Saturday afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and it's just got that nice crispness that uh, mm. that an Irish, uh, you know, more of the English styles, you know, will provide. Faith and Magora. <laughs> <laughs> Almost nutty a little bit. <clears throat> well, yeah, yep. Tommy, we all know you are. Hmm. So you got some roast, yeah. You definitely got some roastiness to it. It's got the, you know, that, you know, that nice little, little bit of, uh, you know, uh, nuttiness to it. 
Mm. Uh, obviously, that comes from the, the malts that we use, uh, and the, just that little bit of accentuation of the, uh, the the hops. You know, that that will just give it a really nice that really nice crispness. It's good. Again, also smooth. Mm-hmm. Your beers, yes. your, your beers are very, very smooth. Yeah, we so try and far. keep try and keep that uh, keep that oppor- you know keep that available uh, throughout the. the it's great for the ladies. Drinkability very high. Yes. Mm-hmm. Two thumbs up. All right, cameraman's telling us that we need All to right. take another break. Yeah, we'll be right back in just a few. And, we'll get... and here we are again. We're gonna get to check out some of the other beers here under the Florida Avenue brand. So, uh, so the benefit that uh, happened when we acquired Ford Avenue was there was that nice little opportunity to take a look at what the recipes were. And while the brand themselves have been absolutely fantastic on on the market, we made the made the made the stance that the flag, you know, the the, the, the pirate ship and everything like that. You know, there's an opportunity here with new ownership to take these brands to the next level. So the benefit now is that the product that's in these cans currently uh, is actually new recipes for us. Uh, we've, we've been doing these beers for a number of years. So we went back to the palate, you know, the, 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 your mouth itself, and basically said, all right, well, what, what do we want to put in these cans? You know, do we want them to line up with what Brewbus is doing? Do we want them to stand alone? And of course, yes, we want them to stand alone. But we want to make them just more that much better. Did so, you, now, did you keep any of the original Florida Avenue recipes? Yes. So what we did was we just went more with the, the same route that we've gone with the Brewbus brands. Is just make them more natural, make them you know a, a little bit more of an appeal. And so uh, uh, we instead of cutting corners on on certain you know certain avenues like within the brewing process, we went the extra mile to to utilize natural ingredients uh, in the in the pro, uh, product making. Um, that, that, that's one thing you say natural ingredients. Uh, it, the most of the craft beers that are out there today seem to be so much. Uh, you know, obviously, minus the alcohol, mm-hmm. so much more healthy, and just the ingredients are better. It, it's, it's you're a, putting stuff in your body. It's not like uh, a lot of the the you know the light beers that people are used to drinking yeah. that have nothing but corn, I mean, this corn is, you know, corn mash, and it's just all yeah. I mean, we're not stuff. we're we're not talking rice. I mean, we're not talking additives. We're talking natural grains that are, you know that are grown and put, and then with, with this beer, beer in particular, Florida Avenue Ale, uh, this one utilizes um, lemon zest. So is this the IPA? This is the ale. The ale. Uh, so okay. Florida Avenue Ale uh, is a really nice light-bodied uh, ale, um, and you're gonna think this tastes like it's gonna taste like a macro brand, but it's an unpasteurized ale that's just got a little bit of lemon peel to it, lemon zest to it. I I wouldn't compare it to to, to the it, macro no. brand. I, it, so this is no. very smooth yeah. and. Yeah. and it's good. Very, it's very, it's got that approachability for uh, it's got that unique uh, uh, approach of just being a great, cra- you know, mm. it's just a great beer, and again, you know, what we keep talking about with treatments and everything like that is you got to <clears> start someplace. You got to have a good base beer to start, and this is that beer for us. It, uh, Florida Avenue did a great job with that beer, and we we're, we're taking it to that next level. And the benefit is that by utilizing the uh, just the the base levels of it, we're starting to see some great. Fruit additives. There's to... a consistency here mm-hmm. with your beers, for, for sure. Again, I just keep thinking of the word smooth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you did drinkability, super high, really, e- really easy. You know, e- easy to take mm-hmm. in. And, and that, you know, that's my biggest fear with, with yeah. this this beer and sunshine thing is going to a brewery and then <laughs> handing me a beer and me going, oh, it's delicious, and really not liking it. But I've so far I've liked yeah, every no, one of these, really and I feel like I probably will like so all you your beers. Share with you <laughs> So we've uh, we've definitely gone. We, 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 uh, again, we we keep going back to approachability and really trying to meet the the, the, the flavors of, of where we're at. And you know we're we're in a we're in a different time time frame, especially here in Florida, uh, with the amount of craft beer that's coming out and the amount of craft beer that's available. You know, there's time to be experimental, and then there's time to basically mm-hmm. just be like, you know what, I want to be, I, I kind of want to be a standby. I, I want to be that standalone beer that I can re- old reliable. You know, and, and everybody's got that beer. And, you know, we feel that, you know, not only with the getting on the bus, you know, trying some of these brands, coming to our tap room, trying these brands, you're just going to have that opportunity to be like, you know what, this is just a good beer that I just want to have on the boat with me. I need to, I, you know what, we got a tailgate coming up, boom, I'm going to grab a couple six packs of Florida Avenue Ale, I'm going to grab some blue, and we're going to go and have a great afternoon. And that's that's what we want. Mm-hmm. We want that opportunity uh, to really do that to so, enrich people's lives, make exactly. lives better. Exactly. The more of this beer that you drink, economy. the happier you will be. 
the hockey or it's fantastic game? for relationships yeah. really so we uh, I, I like you better already see yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> see it's working so uh so florida avenue ipa uh is this is uh it's about five it's a little over five percent um but just a really nice crisp it's got that really nice dank hoppy hoppy note on the nose uh mm -hmm. but it's a simple ipa and by simple meaning it's not over it's not over overly complex it's not something that you're, you're going to need to you know hold your nose because it's basically yeah. tastes like you're drinking a pine cone yeah but it's got that nice you know smooth capability of, of being just enough hopped and uh, in order to you know and balance where you're not it's definitely lighter mm -hmm. as far as uh ipas go definitely mm -hmm. a little bit lighter like like i said it's not like you're drinking a pine cone <clears throat> there's some beers like uh i you know i my uh my my home base brewery is mm -hmm. uh, Big Top, mm -hmm. and Big Top has uh, the Circus City. Yep. And uh, you've probably had their. Um, they have a. That's a. That's about a six percent, I think, somewhere mm -hmm. around there. Then they have. Um, uh, uh, what is that one called? It's like a ten percent or mm -hmm. ten and a half. Yeah, it's a double IPA. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's the best double IPA I've I've ever had. But those definitely have a, a very. You know, there's no no questioning that those are IPAs. Here, yeah. This is this is an IPA, but it's a little bit on on the lighter mm -hmm. side, taste wise. Again falls in, into that it's smooth same, like the, same, the other ones same light and easy and, yeah. and again you know, the way that you know right you know we're a broad variety of our lighter beers you know to offer um but you know we're working uh, you know that's the benefit of being, of being a brand new working brewery and uh with what with our brew house now we're working on the double ipas we're working on the imperial stouts we're working on the double porters you know we're working on those products uh, you know that everybody wants to see because you know because that's the the newest thing that you have to have. You you want to have, uh, you know it's it's got to have the floral and fauna effect of you know. Uh, but you know what? At the end of the day, we you know we're we're we've made our company. Built, we've built our company off of these brands. Your your brand and, is is in is in the flavor of your beer for sure. And I mean, there's the, such consistency there. And there's it's the incredible. approachability of all of these brands together have collectively given us that opportunity to be fan favorites. So when we go to festivals, we're we're out at festivals probably every month. You know, two, you know, two three times a month. We're doing tastings at all of our local uh, our, our local stomping grounds. And you know, whether it's both brand, whether it's a uh, brew bus or Florida Avenue, you know, we get the same consistent. Uh, you know, temperament from everybody. It's a great beer. It's something I want to go to. It's a good go-to beer. So that's the way we, we re we, we've kept it, and that's the way we're going to keep pushing it. We're going to do start those experimentations, like I said, and the benefit is that everybody's going to, you know, see what we're doing on the light end and in our consistency, and then they're going to train. That's going to translate to us. Well, the, everybody's going to want to see what you're up to. Yeah. So it, the the next the next four months for us are just going to be absolutely fantastic. So we we tell everybody just just to be ready for what's going to be happening. Keep us in keep us in mind on Facebook uh, on our Facebook page, uh, all of our Instagram and social media, and then just check us out. I mean, we're our tap room is available the seven days a week, like I said earlier, and uh, you know whatever's available for for our bus tours. And what so. what's what are what are uh, you know if, if Again, there, there's what 42, 43. Mm -hmm. who, who knows by now? There could, there could be a hundred since last week. I, I feel <laughs> like, but there's so many breweries, and this is, um, you know, as like say an entrepreneur, somebody who wants to start a business. This is a viable opportunity for any business-minded person that loves beer, mm -hmm. likes to, uh, you know, have a, a relaxed atmosphere, mm -hmm. and and, and uh, you know, a job that's not a job kind of thing. What are you guys, what's the evolution of the brewery business, in, in your opinion? What are you guys talking about behind closed doors? Like, what, where do you want to see things go? And, and, you know, what, what's the evolution of the, of the brewery business? Um, I, I mean, I'm not going to speak for Anthony, because obviously his envisionment of both the Brew Bus brand and the Florida Avenue brand are, uh, are, are his. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in my personal opinion, on, on where we are as a community in the Tampa market, uh, where we sit in the state uh, uh, in in Florida, and then where we sit in the southeast, um, you know, we're we're untapped. I mean, we are literally, you know, I, I hate to use that phrase, but we we have so much potential uh, as a community in the state of Florida right now. Um, I think the, the the number last year alone brought in revenue was something like eight hundred and fifty million dollars. So you know, that's twenty fifteen, and now we've nearly doubled uh, in our capacities. Literally, that's awesome. Um, yeah. You know, we're 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 a billion you know a billion dollar market uh, product you know for the state of Florida. Uh, you know, we're we're beginning to see University of Florida uh, start to grow hops uh, in the state. 
Uh, and the experimentation of what that's going to take, you know, like for our agricultural product. Uh, I mean, it's going to be a boom industry, and it's a powder keg. Um, and and everybody talks about a bubble. There's a craft beer bubble, this and that. Yes, the, there's always uh, beer an ebb has and been flow. around forever. It's not going. Yeah, there's anywhere. always an ebb and flow, and you it know, can always just keep getting better. And it's so. either and it's going to do one of two things. Either there's going to be a lot of you know, the big guys are going to buy those. You know, the smaller guys. There's going to be the guys that sell out. There's going to be. And I, that, that term sellout, you know, is, you know, got a, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, you're selling out for, you know, the, the monetary value of what, you're, what you produce as a company. You're selling out because you wanted to sell out. Um, you know, you, you're, there's going to be that consolidation uh, of breweries that are going to just need to co-op together in order to, to be, you know, to have the hop contracts, to have the malt contracts uh, that a lot of the big guys, you know, control. And, uh, you know, we're, we're, as an industry, you know, I mean, it, it, the exciting part is that, you know, we're not, we're not mature. I mean, it's basically like, hey, Florida is like, uh, you've got a 15 year old behind the car, you know, behind the wheel of a car and they don't, you know, <laughs> we still haven't steered the state to the direction that, um, our counterparts in Portland, San Diego, Colorado, uh, Grand Rapids have, uh, you know, with their maturity of being around for 20 to th you know, 30 years. So in the short time that, uh, you know, since Cigar City really kind of brought, you know, barnstormed uh, craft beer into the state uh, you know we're definitely taking that approach as a community especially uh, you know, in, in this area that you know we're, we're not done yet you know we've got a lot of growing to do we've got a lot of breweries to make 17 million people in the state God knows how many people come in you know from out of state on a regular basis we want all of our local brands to be uh, to made to be made available and uh, you know not to say that the, the macros uh, don't have a place they do uh, but we just want the we want that that part of that market share that uh, that they've been they've commanded for so long, and we just feel as a community that uh, whether you're drinking us as your local favorite, uh, you know, stopping into a, all of our local tap rooms as part of your your weekend you know romp, uh, you know, we just want that support too. Like when you go to the grocery store, you see us on the liquor you know on the mm -hmm. liquor store shelf. So do, do you feel like the macro brands, your your Budweisers and your Coors and all those? Things, do you feel like they're going to be part of the community that 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 the the craft, you know, brew community is one one day, or and or... again, this is solely an opinion of, of my own. It doesn't sure. represent Brew Boss or right, Fair right. Avenue in any way. I I I have this firm feeling that they still they don't know what their place is in the world yet. Hmm. Uh, you know, they they're just like us. You know, they're more. I think they're more scared that we're going to eat out their bottom hmm. line. And there's an equal share opportunity. Uh, you know, they've got the billions of dollars to you know command whatever they could. They could squash craft beer sure, tomorrow sure. if they collectively yeah. wanted to. The reality is, is that they they know that they need us, and we need we don't need them necessarily because we survived without them prior to prohibition, when there was only 180 million people in the country, and you had the same amount of breweries per capita per person, as you know what you have you know to literally today, uh, and you know we just we're just sitting in that you know kind of that that idle time of all right well we just haven't figured out how to collaboratively work together without you know stepping on each other's toes. You know, everybody will always joke about brewed the hard way, and hmm. uh, you know, and the joke really is that uh, you know we're all you know we're all hardworking stiffs at the end of the day. I mean, I wear nine hats. You know, most of the brewers that you know that work you know like that are small time have three to four hats th th themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, you go brew in the morning, you go do a, a tasting at seven o'clock at night, and then you go back to brewing in the morning. Right. And you're you driving know. a bus. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and and so you know that's the, that's what it is for me today. It's you know setting up operations, doing a, an interview with you guys, talking about brew bus, and then going and driving a group you know around for the afternoon. So uh, again, we're you know we're we're all in this together, and I think that over the next couple of years, as they you know the governments really start to realize throughout the states and counties and you know, on the federal level uh, that there's going to be opportunities for both you know both entities to work together hand in hand and you know why one's got to get more favor than the other because they got deeper pockets you know that's just how it's going to be so now these wow. these are <clears throat> great i love the flavor i'm really looking forward to maybe coming back mm -hmm. when you get the uh, pumpkin spice and <laughs> all the fall ones do you think you'll have us yeah. back to do another yeah. tasting yeah we can definitely do yeah. that uh, well, will not be the last time the last you've seen of us no nope. so my we'll my, my personal recommendation to you guys and i i thank you guys for so you know for coming out today oh, uh, it was a great opportunity to talk with you guys uh is to get you on the bus the next time so we'll uh we'll, we'll yeah plan we want we were talking about that earlier we'd like to make that happen yeah. that so would make we'll, for a cool uh, we'll, video we'll get the uh, we'll get you guys on the bus. So we'll take a quick little peek of uh, the tap room, the brew house, and uh, and then uh, one of the buses. And, yeah, uh, get you on your right. way, guys. Well, I celebrate right. my birthday cool. every month. So. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're gonna go out and take a look around, and we'll be back.
Dave Arndt gave us a brief tour of the tasting room as well as their in-house brewing facility. Without giving away any of the brewing secrets, we were walked through the process from beginning to end. It was very informative and well worth taking a tour for yourself. Stop by the tasting room to sample some of the 20 taps of brew bus beers and a selection of other local brewers. Or hop on the brew bus for the ultimate craft beer experience and discover Tampa Bay's bus scene. Check out brewbususa.com and book your tour today. Thanks again for hanging out with us at Brew Bus here in Tampa. It's been a great experience. Dave was really awesome. Tons of information. And this is a really fun place. You need to come check it out. If you're in the Tampa Bay area and you haven't been here, you're missing out. And if you haven't taken your friends, family, whoever, on one of these cool buses and bounced around to hit all the breweries, you're an insane person. Come drink some beer and have a great time with Brew Bus like we did. All right. Cheers. Yay. And have a beer-tastic day. <laughs>